And Tuesday is my favorite, favorite time of the week. And I am just so excited to be here. But you know what else? I am really exhausted. I have been in front of people all day, right? Talking to people. I felt like if you've ever seen that picture of back in the day when they were testing nicotine on monkeys, where they had the straws coming out the monkey's head and it was smoking a hundred cigarettes at one time. I felt like I had straws coming out of my head and people were sucking on my brains. But <laughs> yeah, so I did um, a Narbo lunch and learn this morning. Very well turned out. And thank you to the ladies that came. And then I did a Narbo open house earlier this evening before I jetted down here in a taxi to interview my guest. And so tonight I'm going to speak in with Rose Bartu. Did I say that right? Yes. Who is a singer songwriter and my mic is moving. <laughs> She's a singer songwriter and um, I call her a peace activist because she's always writing songs about peace and building bridges, which is one of her songs. And so I'd like to welcome her onto the show. So Rose, Welcome to Beyond Potential, Live Life Your Way. Thank How are you. you? Good. How are you, Noreen? I am very, very well. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about yourself. Tell me where are you from because you've got this big accent. I do. <laughs> and so tell us the audience a little bit about who you are, where you're from, what you're about, what inspires you, and let's get a conversation rolling. All right. I am from Austria originally. Mm -hmm. And I grew up in a small village in the Austrian Alps. Sounds with, pretty. Yeah. Like the sound of music mm -hmm. with five siblings. Oh, wow. And there was always music in the house because we all played instruments. More than one. And what inspired me early on, my parents were also activists, environmental activists. So I was inspired by that, the activism, which for sure um, made me become who I am today. And um, the music. Actually, I started to play the violin because my older brother played the violin. And mm -hmm. I loved how he played. Yeah. Oh, cool. So you grew up in, I'm just going to pick up what you put down. So you grew up in the Austrian Alps. Mm hmm and your parents were activists, mm -hmm. environmental activists. Right. So I'm thinking of the Austrian Alps, you know, and my pictures that I've always seen of that place is really green and beautiful yes. and fresh air and snow and mountains and things like that. I'm like, what is there to be an activist about? <laughs> uh, it's a really good question. Um, there are things to fight for even in Austria. So mm -hmm. my father started a nonprofit against the highway through our valley mm -hmm. so it's still one of the last valleys in austria without a highway through okay and um my parents are architects but my father actually specialized in animal housing mm -hmm. so animal? animal housing okay so he ended up researching stables where cows can walk around oh, and okay. he also was working for the austrian government and the european union to create the code, what farmers have to fulfill so mm -hmm. that food can be organic. Mm -hmm. So he was always fighting against big companies and for, you know, small farmers right. and, and that like, sounds great. So yeah. Like, and just saving the environment. And yeah, we have very rare birds in our valley that mm -hmm. come through and before they move on. And now uh, doing this over 30 year fight, mm -hmm. um, we had like, like even like camps when this when the government started building without the riots and people you know really um chaining themselves up against the Francism. yeah so and my siblings were involved and um the european union ended up when we joined the european union ended up actually declaring some of those parts to mm -hmm. be protected parts Wow. It's such rare... I'm, I'm still stuck on the conversation of uh, creating barns for the cows to walk around because you know... stables where oh, they don't sta have any leashes on and they just walk around in right. the stables. Yeah. Right. So and they, then he built them for the farmers. You mean, but um, these are for cows, right? Because yeah. you say stables. When I think of stables, I think of horses. Oh, no, for cows. So these were What the, do you call that in We English? call it a barn, like a barn, right? It's okay. a barn. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay. Great. So, we, um, so you built barns so the horses have free range where they can move around. Mm -hmm. 
Well, the, the cows. Cows, yeah. Yeah. So you got me horses, cows, stables. And, right? They also help pick getting better um, floors so they don't hurt themselves so much. And um, it, yeah, he was, he was fighting against the big companies that treat animals like. Right. So yeah. it sounds like, so your animals, <laughs> even though we're going to go slaughter them and eat them, they sound like they have a certain quality of life yeah, if they, they were have. in one of your father's barns, yes. which is pretty, I, I think that's pretty impressive. I yeah. like that. So how long ago, like how many years is this? Because I'm, I'm looking at like our animals who are living in utter squalor, right? And um, we say organic, but that might just be, you know, they open the air rights um, for five minutes a day so they can get some sunlight. And that's considered organic. I'm, I'm exaggerating. People. The standards really in Europe am. are much higher. Yeah. So the standards in Austria are much higher. Yes awesome i think that's great so your food I'm and he hoping- was fighting against um genetical modified food like literally in the 80s right so this is what this is like 30 something years ago that he was having these conversations yeah and and actually my parents put solar panels on our house in the 70s and i grew up with hot water from the sun huh. and our house is 100 percent renewable energy right now oh, wow so and so if your house was 100 percent renewable energy at that time not yet now it is at that yeah. time it was literally i grew up with hot water from the sun right so what what did what was it called was it called solar panels yeah those oh. were solar panels yeah so your father was kind of before his time like well, before back then, the time yeah or you could say united states is 30 years behind that's true i could say that <laughs> you know i, I could totally say <laughs> but people if you don't know that i have electricity in my New York apartment from solar energy. Well, now you do in your new yeah. apartment. So well, you don't know even in Brooklyn. Right, you just sign up for the right company. Now I have electricity from gas. You you could oh no you can do that you can sign up. You just well, need the right company. I live in I a guess. co-op, and it's it doesn't gonna matter. Be, it's gonna be gas. What they're gonna bring to like no I don't know. Oh, I have a look at it, but I think Maureen, you, you can get sun energy honestly. I'll look at it and mm-hmm. see what's available. I, I know it. I have some ESO stuff. But anyway, <laughs> so tell me what else. So you I recently got a check of like fifty six dollars mm-hmm. unexpectedly because I get solar energy. Great. Good. What did you what did you do with your fifty six dollars? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it all goes back into my music. Right. So so t- so you started playing music at what age? Three? Um, I don't know. Honestly, as far as you can remember, all maybe your life. five with the recorder. I know that I started the violin at seven, uh-huh. but I sang when I was three. Uh huh. So you were singing at three. That's what my grandmother told me that I would always sing when she would walk with me. And you were playing a recorder. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I we think, all started. With I think the everybody did the recorder in yes. Europe, like because I remember having a recorder. I hated it, <laughs> and I remember um, having to do violin lessons. Hated it. Right? Why? Because I didn't like that thing in the crook of my neck it just mm-hmm. felt really and I'm a fidgety person so violin wasn't for me I'm not <laughs> musical at all but I do remember having a really great music teacher Mr. Ed mm. I think that's what his name was uh, something like that and um, he would have us write music mm-hmm. and then he would play on the piano he would teach us music we would write music and then he would play on the piano I remember that being really really interesting but that's as far as my musical um, endeavors so you play music at three and, t- t- you know, take me down that path. No, it was, I guess, singing. Huh? <laughs> at singing three, at three. That's what my grandmother said. Singing and playing yeah. the recorder and playing well, the violin. We all learned the recorder. Then I played the violin. I never stopped the violin. I took on guitar for some time. Mm-hmm. And then I ended that. And I took on piano for many years mm-hmm. next to the violin. And what I loved, one of the things I loved the most was playing in the orchestra. Mm-hmm. And then playing string quartet with my three older siblings. So there was we did the, music in your house. We did that professionally, meaning we took master classes and we played concerts and all around Austria. In some locations, not all around, yeah. And then I moved out at fourteen to study mm-hmm. music at a specialized high school and, and at the university. So would I be right to say that music is your life? Yeah, it became my life. It wasn't our parents' plan. Right. No. Not so, at all. so let me ask you a question. But I did have an environmental magazine when I was about 12. That was my first activist endeavor, actually. I had, you, you wrote 
an yes. environmental magazine. <laughs> yeah, okay, tell me a little bit about that. I'm really proud of that. Like, I had girlfriends, like two or three of us, and we wrote an environmental magazine. Uh-huh. I created the logo in my art class, uh-huh. and then um, it was like a worm, and we called it like the environmental worm or something. A worm. A worm, yeah. yes. <laughs> And then we hand wrote our articles and we, we grew some vegetables. So we shared about our vegetables we grew and how to separate garbage, mm-hmm. you know, into paper and plastic. Oh. And, and then we sold it to our neighbors. You and sold, it, sold it to your neighbors? Yeah, I don't know what else we wrote about. Yeah, mm-hmm. but, but that's pretty interesting. Yeah, we had like editorial meetings and, and stuff like that. It was fun. That sounds great. Sounds awesome. So... um. When I come back, we're going to take a break. But when we come back, we're going to go in a little bit deeper about your music and how and how did you get to New York and all that good stuff. Okay. All right? So thanks. We'll be right back. <laughs> You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. Are you stuck in a rut? Negative thoughts, feelings, and conversations got you down? Hi, I'm Noreen Sumter, the Potentiator. Tune in every Tuesday at 9 to 10 p.m. Eastern Time and listen for new ideas on my show, Beyond Potential, Live Life Your Way, on talkradio.nyc. Who do you want to connect with? Are you an entrepreneur or intrapreneur looking to build your following? Welcome to our show. Follow, Follow Me Friday, Friday with Joan and Priya. Tune in every Friday at noon Eastern on talkradio.nyc. We're, We're your digital, digital connectors. connectors. Woo woo! <laughs> <laughs> Talking Alternative Radio, 24 hours a day. Hello, so we're back on Beyond Potential, Live Life Your Way, and we are now, today we're speaking with Rose Bartu. I call her singer, songwriter, and peace activist. So um, Rose is talking to me about her experience as, her first experience as an activist with her first handwritten yeah. Um, magazine, which was was a wor- had a worm on it, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> which she created with her friends and sold to her neighbors. Well, that's kind of ingenuitive. Yeah. I love it. I think that's great. So, and envi- it's called the environment worm. <laughs> it was called the, the environmental name. worm. Yes, that's really cool. But you know what's so exciting about all the people that I've had on my show is that it's st- everything that they're up to is pretty much started in their youth. Right. Mm-hmm. So I'm not surprised that you had this editorial magazine because <laughs> like now you, you actually make music and music is your life. Like it's a part of your life. It's how you make your living. It's how you have your joy and your fun. So I'm not surprised at all. And that that part of you is still very much alive and well inside of your music. So tell us, how did you get to the United States? What brought you here? OK, um, do you want me to be transparent? I want you to be <laughs> open and tell your truth. Speak your truth. So I grew up quite anti-American mm-hmm. um, because I remember I was very much influenced by the news we heard on the radio. Mm-hmm. As, as all of us. And um, I grew up without television, but in the morning, 7 to 7.30, while we had breakfast, we listened to radio and the news in Austria, mm-hmm. which was 10 minutes Austrian news, 20 minutes world news. Mm-hmm. And I remember all the wars that were fought all around the world. Right. And the United States was involved many times. Mm-hmm. And it somehow influenced me a lot. I don't know. It stuck with me. Mm-hmm. So what happened? I was invited to a classical masterclass in Minneapolis. 
and I was studying in Graz um, classical concert violin. And in another city, I studied jazz mm -hmm. violin. And I just took the opportunity and decided, which I've never thought about prior, let me just visit New York. And so I booked the flight over New York. And on the way back, I visited New York. It was kind of hilarious because I was, I was, um, I had a bike accident in Minneapolis. So yeah, I've, she rides a bike everywhere. Back then, I didn't have a helmet, so I had yeah. I came here, and instead of staying three days, I just felt I landed and fell at home. Mm -hmm. Felt like I felt like I was at home, which mm -hmm. was very awkward because I still have it. I'm a country girl, mm -hmm. and then. I had only one contact um, professor of mine who was from Detroit and had played with Charles Mingus. Mm -hmm. said, contact this bass player. She, you can trust her. She was a white woman. Mm -hmm. And so I contacted her and we became friends at right. the end of the week. I visited her and she asked me, so how do you like New York? And I was like, I love it. She asked, do you want to come here? I said, sure, that would be great. Again, I never had thought about it. And the whole evening, she talked me into what I needed to do to be able to come here. Right. And that was not something I had ever planned, but she right. kind of implanted in me that desire. Uh -huh. And so has it been a regret? No, never. Good. Awesome. So <laughs> I feel sometimes torn apart, but... Because torn, miss, in what way? I really miss my family uh -huh. and I really miss nature and that lifestyle. Uh -huh. But you go home pretty regularly. I do go every year. So you don't have to miss it. You just go when you feel like you want a taste of home. I'm not yet home. there that I go whenever I feel like I have a taste of home, but I will get to that place uh -huh. in my career. Great. Soon. <laughs> so now tell us, so you had a teacher that played with Charles Mingus. Um, yeah, actually in Austria. He was yeah. a black African American drummer. Uh huh. And who else who else have you has taught you that has that you've worked with the greats, that have worked with the greats? Well, when I came here, um, Reggie Workman, who still leads the jazz department of the New School University, he mm -hmm. was John Coltrane's bassist. Mm -hmm. And he was one of the first people. He was the one who accepted me into the jazz school, which was right. a huge honor. And he's a friend to this day. He calls me up, uh -huh. like really out of the blue, in the middle of the night, <laughs> to invite <laughs> me to his concerts. <laughs> he's, he's now over... 90? It's 90 years old, and he's still performing. No, he's over 80, yeah. He's still performing. And yeah. he's still performing. Awesome, great. So, so tell me, like, what's your favorite music to play? I mean, I know it's kind of hard to say between, you know, but what, what, what do you like point, playing the most? Yeah. <laughs> My own music. Okay, your own music. <laughs> but, like, what's the, what's the uh, genre of music that you like to play? I really love all genres of music, uh -huh. but, well, I really love classical music. That's what my foundation is mm -hmm. and i love playing all genres of popular music mm -hmm. um i did jazz for many years and at some point i lost my joy in jazz mm -hmm. because it's very sophisticated and 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 i'm very heady person and it i feel like i want to more i want to play more for my heart these mm -hmm. days so mm -hmm. <laughs> if i play in any popular genre i don't have to worry about Playing the right changes and stuff like that. So, right. so in jazz, you have to figure out it's very technical. It's very technical, and um, I practice many hours, and and I just always felt somehow insufficiently mm -hmm. um, uh, trained, talented, whatever. Right. And I compared myself with everybody met here, you know. Right. So that is so that is so um honest of you to say that like it's it's way you're too heady and it's just way too sophisticated for you so that was that's really awesome well i'm um, sophisticated there were those years where it really was great this uh -huh. is why i think i loved it right and then as i changed as a person uh -huh. i wanted to be less and less in you my head free, right yeah and i wanted to free myself and then i came here and i noticed all these different um you know groups of jazz musicians and I felt also a bit discriminated as an instrumentalist, a female, a European, white. Mm -hmm. um, and there was a different, people treated each other differently than I was used to in Europe. Uh -huh. Musicians, I felt women and male were equal in Europe. Uh -huh, and uh -huh. I came here. Well, honey, you had uh, bonds where cows are walking around. <laughs> so it's like a really advanced sort of society or societal activities. No disrespect to New York. I love New York and I love America. But like, you know. I just felt like um, 
it was normal for me as a student to hang with male musicians and practice with them and I came here and that was impossible right and if I would go to um I would hang out a lot at these jam sessions late night and when my peers from school would go from one jam session to another they never took us along the right. women and I asked why and they said they are not comfortable with the woman around so I felt very isolated isolated yeah and they're always mostly male guys right um, who are instrumentalists and then I have an awkward instrument and I remember I once asked okay Robert Clasper I went to school with I asked him what he respects about me and he literally said <laughs> Robert Clasper I'm sorry I love him he said to me I really respect that you come with your violin everybody hates that instrument <laughs> and you play at this jam session anyways and you just do your thing so that's what he respects you know that was... he respected your tenacity yes. you're, you're asking what do you respect about my music and he's saying and we hate your violin yes pretty much that's what he said <laughs> and you know I recently ran into Robert and when I see him we always hug each other I love him and we are we're cool we love that you come but we hate your violin <laughs> so you can come but leave the violin at home <laughs> yeah <laughs> that was just kind of oh like... wow that's amazing all right so um so tell me uh we you uh, the listeners you're going to get an opportunity to hear um rose's music at the break because we're going to give you a little taste of her sounds and stuff so stay tuned and listen out for that <laughs> so um what else what else so you didn't tell me so your genre that you like is your own music so that's a perfect intro into <laughs> sharing your music and then they get to hear it what song break. are you playing um which song the freedom oh cool. yeah the new one the new one yeah, yeah. well i have one that's even newer than that well that one is... well, i can't keep up sweetie <laughs> Yeah, I have a new one after that. So this is a first, my first song that I actually had a producer to work on, mm -hmm. meaning everything before I produced mm -hmm. and I wrote. And now I'm working for the first time with a producer, which is very exciting. Right. Do you want me to explain a little bit? Sure, what sure. Share about that. So it means um, that I have written the songs. Mm -hmm. I bring them to him. Well, mm -hmm. I had him for four songs and then he creates the music around the song. So mm -hmm. the harmonies and the lyrics and melodies are all created, but he creates the everything around it. So on the song that you will be hearing called Freedom, I wrote the piano part and all the string parts mm -hmm. and the vocals and the melodies and the lyrics, mm -hmm. and he created everything around it. And what's exciting about that, he's a very experienced producer. So he has worked for many years with Charles Stone. She's a um, yeah. British artist. I know who she is. Oh, you know Joss, Joss. J -O -S -S, yeah. J-O-S-S Stone. Yeah, yeah. love her. Love yeah, her. and he has worked with her since her first record, right. and he produced her last record, which was a, actually a regular record, and they were Billboard number one. Mm -hmm. And so what's exciting is that he takes my songs, my personality, and he really figures out the sound that he thinks matches with my voice mm -hmm. and my songs, and that's something that I couldn't really pinpoint. You can't do that myself. on your own. Yeah, yeah. No, you can't. You can only do so much on your own. We need yeah. each other. Yeah. So, so it's very exciting because when I met him, you know, it's just an honor to get to work with him because it was through a connection in the music industry. Mm -hmm. Carrie Cole, she, I was a, in a course of her. She, he brought, she brought him on and interviewed him about how he produces. And mm -hmm. I just felt like this is the guy. Right. So and I never to... trusted anyone with my so music. So now what prior. was that like? What did you have to give up to like actually have uh, somebody produce your, your songs? What did you have to give up? Well, it was like he put me through a hardcore training because he was used to working with artists that have been on labels, a lot of like whole teams around them and mm -hmm. develop, have been developed much further than me as an right. artist. And he had to really mold me into an artist. And what <laughs> I, yeah, it was like a lot of, like I would record stuff and he would give me feedback and he worked really, really hard on me. I must really give him credit for that. Probably more than he has ever in vested into an artist so uh -huh. what i had to give up is knowing what i was doing right you know so you had to come from nothing basically yeah, yeah. over and over and over and what and was that like for you so for months i would just record in the studio and would get sometimes hard crushing feedback <laughs> you know on one song right. it took us like a half year to finish one song and actually the next song was one and a half years but not because he in gave me so much input but that was just the way how it worked out me working on the song with my Voice teacher. After that, I after the first song, 
I kind of, he told me, well, the next time I want you to, what, what was his feedback? Um, I forgot. But anyway, even after the first song in the studio, because you get one day in the studio with him, that's it. And then right. he takes what he has and makes a song. And then he gave me feedback what needs to be improved for the next song. Right. And so it's, it's, it's challenging and it's great. So it was heart crushing. So you had to put your ego aside. Yeah. Right. And step into it like a brand new baby. I don't mm -hmm. know anything. Mm. Wow. And I know you see what I do know about you is that you're a very hard worker. And when you set your mind to something, you plunge in and you really go for it. Right. Um, and I know that you've done courses with me, which I'm like, you come away with so much stuff and you brought so much stuff. And I'm like, Oh my God. And so other people will bring like, like two things and hers will be like a hundred, <laughs> but, but that's who you are. Like mm -hmm. you really go deep in yourself. So for you to say you worked one and a half years with somebody who you got gut crushing or heart crushing information, I can imagine what that was like for you. Yeah. But, um, so the first song took us half a year and then it was another one and a half so years. But because I also kept getting sick and he can't go in the studio with me with a voice like this right, right. now. So literally this year I got sick three times before we were supposed to go into the studio. So it kept being postponed. postponed. But um, the good feedback I got the second time around. I want to take this one minute before we go to break and I want you to set us up for this song. Okay, so Freedom is a song about freedom, justice and human rights for all people. Mm -hmm. And it shares my story about coming here to the mm -hmm. United States and my passion about healing the world with my music. Okay. All right. So we're going to take it away. You are listening to the Talking Alternative Network. <laughs> Are you into comics, movies, and pop culture at large? What about music and TV? Then you're in for a treat. This is Michael Dolce, your host on TalkingAlternative.com. I've been professionally writing comic books, screenplays, and music articles for almost 15 years. Catch my show, Secrets of the Sire, at its new primetime slot, Wednesdays, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, and get the inside scoop on the pop culture universe you love to talk about. For more info, go to SecretsOfTheSire.com. Are you feeling unhappy with your body, shape, or size? Ever feel out of control with food? I'm Elizabeth Tripp, your host of Nourish the Soul. Join me to uncover the root to these imbalances and discover a permanent solution to living a healthy life. Join us every Wednesday at my new time, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on talkradio.nyc. Talking Alternative Radio, 24 hours a day. Thank you. 
So we're back on Beyond Potential, Live Life Your Way. And I hope that song, I'd love to hear your thoughts about it. And Saint, you are welcome to call back again. We were just yes, engrossing Saint. conversation when you called in, so we didn't pick up the call. But I'd love to have some feedback on the song. I think it's quite beautiful, actually. I love that it's like a, there's like a gentle flow. It's, <laughs> it's not aggressive. It's just a gentle sort of lull into the conversation of freedom. So tell us a little bit more about the song. Um, Is that what you were trying to do? Be gentle about, you know, like, cause it's powerful. It's haunting is what it is. Oh, okay. Yeah. The, the, yeah, it's very haunting is the experience for me. Mm. What is it like for you? What, you? what were you trying to convey? Um, I don't think of it that way. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I come up with the melodies and then. How do you come up with melodies? How do you come up with songs? Is it like a download? Is it like you hear something? Yeah, I hear melody and sometimes it's with words and sometimes. So you're just like a butterfly, you catch it. Mm -hmm. You're like catching it as you go along. And then the lyrics take more work, uh -huh. meaning like to but you flesh to them out. Them. Yeah, yes. over and over and over and over, a lot of uh, edits. Uh -huh. Yeah, and then you fine tune the melodies, but I always hear harmonies. I remember how I told you I used to play string quartet? Mm -hmm. I mean, I was always the second violinist in our string quartet, so I hear harmonies to everything. Right. That's why you hear a lot of layering of vocals in my songs, and that's because I hear harmony to everything. Right. So how do you how do you manage yourself so that you, if you're on a harmony, it's like that you manage that harmony and you like any other harmonies that come in you have to sort of push them out. how do you manage that you mean when i record yeah or? when you're when you're writing a song right you get an experience mm -hmm. and you like that experience but there's more experiences more songs coming along how do you sort of match you put those do you take those down and then put them away for later or what do you do i like to work on one song at a time mm -hmm. and then i stick to that and i'm so if other songs start come downloading, right? What do you do with those? Um, well, there was this time when I wrote many of the songs. I, I tried to write a song every day, uh -huh. and I did. A, a full song, meaning words and melodies. Uh -huh. and, but they were very raw. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And then I chose the best ones to work on and, fi and, and, and fine tune them. Uh -huh, the ones that inspired you as... As to, okay, so you, you worked on, so you had 365 songs if you worked on a song every day for a year. Mm, I didn't do it for a year, unfortunately. But by the time I went to my producer, I had over 40 songs uh -huh. to share with him. And how long does it take? If it takes you a year to record one song. <laughs> no, it doesn't take a year. To, I have to take that back. It took me half a year right. to be ready that my producer felt I was ready to go in the studio with him. Uh-huh. You hear these stories all the time that artists go into the studio and write a song in a day or in a night. Right. 
Is that true? Yeah. Okay. You hear that? Like, um, um, what's her name? Sia, one of my favorite artists. She wrote Rihanna's Diamond song in two hours. Uh -huh. Literally. So it really depends on your experience and not... Yeah, and how, how much you fine-tune it and how you work with your producer. Right. It, could go, it could happen really fast. In my case, it's not happening fast yet. Right. So is it like um, because she's been doing it so much that it has now become like... Yeah, for her, it's just... And she doesn't, she doesn't edit and fine-tune her lyrics. She just fills in. She has ideas. I heard interviews with her. She has ideas and she just fills words in. She's not so particular. Right. And, and then they, they, they work it out together. together. And then she and had then the she song, had the song and, then, and then Rihanna wanted to record it. I don't know how that work, went and how long she took, but every, every ride is different. Mm -hmm. So are you trying to, what, what are you, where do you see yourself and what is it that you're trying to do for you in your life? I would like to just keep writing songs for myself and mm -hmm. also co-write with other people for mm -hmm. other artists, ideally. Mm -hmm. So you, I love the songwriting and I love being in the studio. And of course I want to perform and I see myself more in the studio than on the stage. Okay. It's just, I'm more comfortable there. Let's talk about on the stage because I did see you perform at the blue note. Oh, you came? Yes. Remember I came to the blue note yes. with the whole group. The so whole, how was that for you? In the one experience. Well, I'm going to say that when you were performing for me, it's like, you know, you're just Rose to me, right? <laughs> but then when you got on stage, mm -hmm. oh my God, it was like a complete and utter transformation. It's really? like, who was, who is this woman? <laughs> it's like, literally you unfolded. Like it would live like you were this person. It, you know, I'm, I'm, what comes to mind is like, they're rolling cigars, right? And you're in the middle, right? <laughs> it's like a rolling the cigar and you're in the middle. And then all of a sudden you get on stage and you start to open up this thing. Start, all the leaves start <laughs> to open up and this person pops out and that is you. And it was like, for me, your face changed, your body changed, everything just changed. It was, it was mind blowing. It was because it was like a new view of mm -hmm. who you were for me. It was amazing. It was completely amazing. Yeah. Wow. And I even say to Jackie, she looks so different. <laughs> oh my God. It was like, yeah. Jackie was like, yeah, this is how it is. It's just, she just transforms on stage. It was amazing. And what is it like for you performing? Yeah. It, it, I feel different than how I feel normally. I miss it. You do? I always say that for me, it's like when I am working with a client, it's not Noreen as I know myself that's yeah. working with a client. It's this being, this conversation, this energy that I have created for myself. And it's the energy that I've created by, for myself that's asking these questions. It's not Noreen, mm -hmm. right? And so I guess that might be, it's not you. It's the energy that you say you are that's doing the performance. Well, I just worked on these, you just work on this music for so long and mm -hmm. so much that I, I remember the Blue Note show was beautiful because, yeah, it just felt really confident on stage. And it took me a long time to get to that place where I can be myself. But I felt like I just could be myself. Like, um, you know, I didn't have to apologize mm -hmm. to be myself. And that what's great about being on stage you don't have to apologize out in the world I often feel like I have to dumb myself down or mm -hmm. you know you have a strong personality you might feel that way sometimes maybe you don't but no. I do <laughs> no but I, I I don't feel like I have to dumb myself down but Not I feel dumb. that's the wrong word um I, I can't find the right word but uh, uh, sort of like be reserved like like pull yourself back a bit um I think that is often because we are looking for um other people's approval. I think when you like really have stepped into who you are and you've accepted yourself for who you fully are, then there's no, there's no apology. That's why I say call in the one unapologetically, mm -hmm. calling yourself unapologetically and not apologizing for who you are because you never have to. So it's like when you're on stage, there is no <laughs> apology needed is right. what I got yes. from you. You were completely being yourself. So let me ask you a question. So what is it that you would like the audience or the listeners to know about you? What is it you'd like to share with them? 
Well, I want to share my new project. Mm -hmm. I? So I, there are two things that I'm working on, which is the new EP. Mm -hmm. Freedom is one of the songs, mm -hmm. and I just completed another one. I do two more with Steve Greenwell, my producer. Then I want to add a fifth song. I don't know yet what that will be. So that will come out in January. Mm -hmm. That's the goal. And then in addition, I have a new project called Freedom Around the World. Mm -hmm. And Brian is sitting back there. And he is... Um, hey, Brian. The executive... <laughs> I forget his title. Executive Director and Chief of Staff. Okay. And Freedom Around the World is a vision I've had um, to celebrate 70 years of the Declaration of Human Rights mm -hmm. and to create a platform that I want to spread, like the Women's March, mm -hmm. Go Global. That's why it's a global concert series. We start out with a concert on August 19th in New York City. This August? Mm -hmm. Okay. And I want to invite other artists to join me. Mm -hmm. And then I want it to become a platform so that leaders who create systemic shifts have a platform to speak about what they care. Mm -hmm. So it becomes a platform for leaders. Is this an all day thing? Is this a night? That'll be like an e afternoon, evening, 4 p.m., 5 p.m. concert. Yeah. And where is it going to be held? Most likely at a synagogue in the city. And those details have to be confirmed. Mm -hmm. But we have a website called Freedom Around the World. Uh -huh. And my own website is rosebar2.com. Okay. And what is it you're looking I mean other than it's freedom around the world so you're looking to create freedom and we're going to hold that thought and mm -hmm. we're going to come right back all right so <laughs> we'll be right back in one in a moment play the song again you're listening to the talking alternative network <laughs> Are you a conscious co-creator? Are you on a quest to raise your vibration and your consciousness? I'm Sam Leibowitz, your Conscious Consultant. And on my show, The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, we will touch upon all these topics and more. Listen live at our new time on Thursdays at 12 noon Eastern Time. That's The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, Thursdays, 12 noon on talkradio.nyc. Are you feeling unhappy with your body, shape, or size? Ever feel out of control with food? I'm Elizabeth Tripp, your host of Nourish the Soul. Join me to uncover the root to these imbalances and discover a permanent solution to living a healthy life. Join us every Wednesday at my new time, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on talkradio.nyc. TalkingAlternative.com So we're back on Beyond Potential, Live Life Your Way, and I'm happy to have you back. And I'm with Rose Bartu. I call her the songwriter, singer, speech, and peace activist, or peace act, music activist, music peace activist. That's who she is for me. So share with us, because you said you needed, uh, on the break, she was sharing that about peace around the world. And uh, she freedom needs around freedom world. around the world. She is looking for, which brings peace, right? Yes. She's looking is. for um, people to join her in this journey. So she's looking for you. I'm having you say it. What are you looking for? So currently we're building our team. So Chief of Staff Brian is very experienced around creating teams. Mm -hmm. He has been a CEO several times. And so it's your opportunity for anybody who wants to get trained, 
and uh, wants to contribute, join our team. We want to build a team of 50 people mm -hmm. because we want to be able to take this anywhere mm -hmm. globally. And um, it doesn't matter what experience you have. We'll take anybody who is committed and wants to contribute and has certain level of integrity so we can count on you. Mm -hmm. And I'm also still looking for artists to showcase, not showcase, really perform. We're looking to be part of it. Yeah, we're so looking for a certain level of artists to be part of it and speakers as well mm -hmm. for the first concert, August 19th. Oh, cool. So people, it's, you hear that? It's August 19th. So if you're interested in participating in a freedom around the world, which is a, I guess, a worldwide project, right? Yeah, it's we're starting in New York, but it will expand. So you're looking for, um, I, I'm, I'm asserting that you're looking for people, not only places to do performances, even though you're going to be doing it in the synagogue, there's probably other places that around the world that you'd like to be able to do it in as well. Yes, in the future. And so are you looking for sponsors for any of this stuff? Yes, looking for sponsors and um, people who want to contribute and be associated. Sponsors would, op we are also drawing media to us. So right. we're looking for opportunities to share it in any media outlets. So where can they reach you? They can reach us um, through my website, mm -hmm. rosebar2.com or rose at rosebar2.com. Mm -hmm. And um, we have freedomaroundtheworld.com mm -hmm. where we will put up I have these flyers, PDFs that I need to just blow newly and mm -hmm. have all the information on mm -hmm. it. Okay. They're done, just not yet on the website. But And what's your vision? Like, what's your overall master vision for this freedom around the world? What, will, what, what do you see it accomplishing or what would you like it to accomplish? I Other would, than freedom, but what does that look like to you? Yeah, so what it looked like to us is that each concert will address an issue mm -hmm that is current and mm -hmm. local and we want to raise funds to support these issues mm -hmm. right now for this concert we would really like to support an organization that helps those children that are being taken away from the families at the border okay so and put in cages which is out outrageous you know this is about celebrating the human rights and mm -hmm. the united states just declared to leave the United Nations Human Rights Council. Mm -hmm. So we want to draw attention to those things. And what, what does that, what does that, how does that make you feel that human, um, the United States is pulling away from that? What was the experience for you about that? I'm outraged. So the reason why I'm doing this also is that my grandmother and my father are war refugees from mm -hmm. the Second World War. Mm -hmm. And so our country and Germany, you know, is going through a lot of um, thinking around how that had happened and mm -hmm. how had how did Hitler happen and how could that have happened? Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot more awareness around how important peace is. I don't see that in this country. And mm -hmm. so it makes me upset when these things happen, you know, or just the fact that they, they pulled out of the climate. Um, what is it? The climate... Paris Climate Accord, yeah. These things that people worked so hard for mm -hmm. and just with, they just don't care. A stroke of a pen. Yeah, it's and it, it doesn't work because the world, this is why I have, I am creating this. This world, we are interdependent. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work that one country is doing whatever they want and mm -hmm. then others have to pay for it, which is kind of the experience I've had with this country. And now I'm American as well which means I feel responsible. Mm -hmm. I'm an American citizen in addition to being an Austrian citizen. Right. So I can no longer just blame us. Right. You can no longer blame America because you are now an American. Yes. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> so I have this vision of the, the world becoming borderless, mm. one world, mm. you know, with yeah. just humans, not I'm British, yeah. you know, you're Austrian, just like we're human and part of the human um, situation, the human dichotomy. And so there are no borders, just one world. What's your view on it? What's your take on that? How would you like, cause I spoke to a guy today about it and he said, Oh, that's never going to happen. Well, it might not happen in my lifetime, but right. I see it like no more borders. We're just like one world with one 
like one world order for all, as in we live peacefully, yeah. we roam freely, and just live I life. just think it's unacceptable that two billion people are starving mm -hmm. and we have enough for everybody. Mm -hmm. And it's just so that we, the first world countries, still live, keep our standard and keep our um, all of that life. There needs to be more equality. So it's right. really for equality and justice and peace around the world. That's mm -hmm. what my stand is. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a conversation and enrolling people to join the conversation and empower others in those countries that are not as advanced, that have a disadvantage, you know, mm -hmm. support them. So I, I just wanted to, so what's the first um, chorus, just, just give us the first chorus of your freedom song, just like speak it. Could you speak it? Freedom, freedom for all. Right. That's really all it is. Is that, is that what you're saying all the, pretty much in the first yeah. chorus? And then there's freedom and justice for all and that the in the end it says freedom freedom for all freedom and justice for all freedom once and for all right that's the end right yeah and that's the haunting for me because it's mm. really nothing else but it sounds like a whole lot of other things it's inside simple. of the song yeah and uh but it's it's a haunting experience and it seems as though there are other words being said but it's mm. not it's just freedom, freedom for all. And it's very different, all different tempos and all different levels in that song. Yeah, you have different harmonies. Yes, yeah, that's yes, why you definitely. That. Well, I'm not the music person, so for me it's like tempo or whatever, but it's, <laughs> you know, you can hear it in different levels mm -hmm. kind of thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. So so it, what's something that, um, that you, what's a question that you'd like to ask me to ask you so that I can ask that question and you can share it? Hmm. Well, that's my thing. Okay, what question? The question that I would like you to ask me is where I would like to see freedom around the world be in five years. Okay, great. So, Rose, where would you like to see freedom <laughs> around the world in five years? In five years, I would like this to have taken on a life of its own. Mm -hmm. So different countries are producing freedom concerts mm -hmm. and inviting young and older leaders that don't have other outlets to speak about the projects they're mm -hmm. doing. And this becomes like a global thing that's being streamed and we support each other. And it's just people take it on themselves. So would that be like a freedom day? Yeah. Have you ever been to the freedom parties in in uh, in Brooklyn? I think actually, they do them all over the city. Actually, they, not, these freedom parties—it's like a day of like, you mm. know, mayhem dancing. I've been there with my weird dancing, but it's it's really cool, and you meet a lot of amazing people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's been going on for quite some time in mm -hmm. the city. So, it would you like to have like a freedom day where that becomes an anthem for freedom in the yeah. world? Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, yeah, does that exist already? A day? No, we have like the. We have like a women's day. What kind of days do we have that exist worldwide? There are some celebrations, right? Yeah, I'm sure. But I'm not sure if they have a freedom day. I don't think so, no. We could create that. Yeah, let's create that a freedom day. So, hey, that, so if you're one of the 50 people <laughs> or people that want to get involved in this to help create a freedom day. Yeah, I, then, can, I, can, I guess I can share my phone number. Yeah, sure. Why not? Sure. It's 917-334-5862. 917-334-5862. And the website is freedomaroundtheworld.com. And my artist website is rosebartu.com. B-A-R-T-U. And no crank calls. <laughs> All right. So we've come to the end. We've got the last two minutes of the show. Is there anything that you want to share? Like, well, What was your experience on the show? I would like to acknowledge you. Thank you. So I would like to acknowledge you, Noreen, for stepping into this beautiful role of interviewing people and sharing um, their talents mm -hmm. while you just, um, you know, I know you're someone who brings empowerment, inspiration anywhere you go. Mm -hmm. And you. this is like such a self-expression. It's really a joy to see you doing this. Yeah, and I see <laughs> you lighting up and... Um, I can't wait to see who else you're inviting. So thank you. Thank you so much. Well, I have some really exciting people coming on the show in the future. And uh, the, the, what sure. I'd like to see for myself is to become like a space 
mm-hmm. in the world for people to express what's important to them, what they care about. And I'm really committed that people live life their way, you know, and they go beyond their potential because most of us are trying to reach a potential mm. or actuality. We should be going beyond our potential because beyond our potential is where all the magic is. The potential if, that we're trying to reach is ones that we know, but going beyond is the potential that we don't know that we don't know. And so that's what <laughs> I'd like to be a space to offer people inside of doing this show. So we have come to the end of the show. I'd like to thank you and acknowledge you for like creating beautiful music, creating peace, really standing in your power, really being committed to what's important to you, your mission. And I'd just like to say thank you for gracing my presence and gracing our show with you and your lovely song. Thank so you. as we leave tonight, we'll be signing off with your song. <laughs> and um, thank you so much. Bye, everyone. See you soon. Bye. Thank you. You are listening to the Talking Alternative Network. Hello, this is Bruce Chamoff, host of the Web Design and Technology Coach. Join me and my guests every Tuesday from 8 to 9 p.m. as we discuss the latest in web design, social media marketing,